So here we are with Costa Poulos yeah. of the famous Poulos Brothers, yeah. okay, import export uh, seafood yeah. uh, here at uh, Piedmont. Now you're born at Pendejanica on the island of Kithara in 1935 right. with parents Panayotis and Varvara. Yes. Um, although you know your you you mentioned your your childhood years were very very poor. Yeah. Tragedy strikes. Yeah. Your family. Correct. Okay. While your father is away uh, at, at the Greek Italian War in yeah. Albania in 1940, Correct. your mother becomes very very ill. Correct. Okay, and she, um, you send her to, uh, the family sends her to Piraeus, the hospitals, but they were full of, because of the soldiers from the war, she returns to Kithira and she passes away from pneumonia. Correct. So your life changes dramatically. Correct. Okay, so instead of, you know, they're already poor years, but now they're even more difficult years, being an orphan. Correct. Um, And it's your mother's mother, your maternal grandmother, that tries to, Help out to help, yeah. to help as much as she can because your father's still away. Correct. And then um, you, as the oldest child, yeah. have to look after your the, younger the, siblings. The siblings. Correct. Wow. Yeah. Can you describe how tough your, your childhood years were? Well, it's very hard, uh, very hard because the, I mean, you're seven, eight years old. It's cold, winter. And you have to go to the farms to get some stuff to cook because I had to do that, pick it up, do a bit of cooking, do help because grandmothers used to be around to do other things, looking after the animals, what have you. So, yeah, it was a hell of a hard life, but then again, what do you do? You have to do it. Hmm. Now, you're, you, you, know, you love school. I and, and you I loved did. education, and you, you know, and if there was hope, if there was hope for you to continue with, with your schooling Correct. into high school, you would have done that. Yeah. But you know, again, that it's that poverty, that poverty, yeah. and and like I think you explained to your dad. Your dad says, but you know, like, but you explained to your father that there's no money, so I can't study. Well, that's true too. I, I might as well aim to it. Uh, I did, like you said, I always loved letters, books, and reading. I was 12, 13, 14 years old, and I write books, I read books like Costa the Great, Cassiani, Tolstoy, and all that. No way, Tolstoy? Yeah, all those, yeah. And now one of us, they get those books, we pass them on, and I was reading all those. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and you also told me that you learned to read, at least read English. Yeah. With, they call it Greek, uh, Greek English method. Yes. Which is, you know, it's Greek and translated in English and so forth. I studied that for two years. Mm. So I, went, I, I studied the method right through. Now, was it inevitable? Was the only way out of poverty migration? Was that the only way? That's the only way I could see it, uh, mm. Vasily. The only way I could see it. I, I couldn't see any other way. And, uh, I thought to myself, well, okay, a sacrifice perhaps in a way, but I won't help the rest of the family too. So at 16, yeah. you're still a teenager. That's right. Yeah, but don't forget, I was a teenager for seven, eight years old. Oh, okay, got it. Um, yes, yes. And you know what I mean. Yeah, so yeah. You, you, you take a ship to Beirut, from Beirut, an aeroplane to Bombay, from yeah. Bombay, you uh, get the Strathmore, Strathmore and, you, and yeah. you arrive in uh, Sydney in 1952. Correct. Um, and you know you you work in a milk bar at Surrey Hills. Correct. Uh, with uh, Nick, the, the the two Nicks. Nick Samuels, yeah. Right. The two the, And what was Sydney like back in 1952? How do you remember it as a 16 year old? I was completely different too. Mm. Not like today. Uh, but you were saying right, you, you went for walks and you, you, it was just dark. It was, yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. The park, you see all these big trees and dark, dark birds to see anything. Yeah, it was really, really dark. Correct, correct. <laughs> and I think, uh, I think you, you tell us a good story. Can you just tell us the story where, you know, the, the, uh, your employer, you know, asked you all these English words and you knew them. But, yeah, then, correct. but then he said, oh, we'll put you at the counter. What happened at the counter? Yeah, well, the first guy came in, 
He said, hey, buddy, give us an orange juice. So what is lady talking about? The boss says, you know, it's orange. <laughs> yes, I said, but the way I know it, is not the way it sounds. <laughs> Completely I, I, different. I know the method of orange juice, not the yeah. not the accent. Yeah. The yeah. other the other thing was being inside the hills. Uh, most of the guys there they use different sort of uh, language S like slang, slang, like uh, matches with crackers, dollar was a bowl, six, and all that. So that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> That was even harder. But get harder. But Nick did, um, you know, like there was, there was. You told the story that um, just before the cinema started, you know, the, yeah. whatever, uh, yeah. you'd go to night school twice a yeah. week. Yeah, yeah, about two hours. Yeah, mm. but I had to get, I had to get back before the theater. Yes. You know, about nine o'clock, either would come, so I had to be back. So yeah, but I was going there for about two hours. Yeah, mm. night school and uh, yeah. And you um, you stay there for uh, one and a half years, and from there you go to a, uh, mil a, a cafe, the Monterey Cafe, yeah, yeah. In, at, Auburn. Uh, in Auburn, correct, yeah. where a much bigger place, much bigger business, yeah. um, and you get more experience there. But even at 19 years old, Mr. Poulos, even at 19 years old, you're not even 20 years old. We're going 20, yeah. You're going 20. You couldn't get the license, so you have to be 21. One. You're still yeah. thinking about business. Correct. Always, yeah. Always. So that was motivating. That was driving you to have your own business. Yeah, yeah. So you ask uh, your um, your brother, Vionisi, Dennis, yeah. to come from Queensland to Correct. buy your first shop. Correct. Can you tell us what happened? Well, well, first of all, I think the people they work with up there, they say, oh, that guy to Sydney, corruption and this or that. And, you know, I say, hold on a minute, mate, you know. So I went up and saw him. I saw the conditions he worked. And I started there and cried. And cried because obvious. I thought to myself, well, if that kind of life, he was working on the plantation in the farm, banana. Mm -hmm. So he used to spray around and that and pull it down. I said, what sort of life this be? You know, I said, I have to come to Sydney and he did. Yeah, but that was hard life for him up there too. And the, the opportunity comes in right at Rydalmere. The yep. opportunity comes Correct. at Rydalmere. Correct. So, how did you buy your first fish shop? Well, you mean the first uh, shop, <laughs> the first fish? <laughs> well, I went there to the market. No, no, no. The, how did you buy the shop? Ah, uh, the shop? Yes. Hi. We had some of uh, the money, whatever money we had, we put it down. And uh, like I said, I, and then I thought, well, it will take a few months. Perhaps you have to keep a guy and so on. That's why I got brother Dennis to stay in Max Mirba in uh, Manly. It's managing it and bring some cash in until we stand up. He did three, four months. After that, the shop went very well. He came in and. How did you, can you tell us the story, uh, uh, Costa? Tell us the story. How did you win over the locals? Like you went over the local people, yeah. local people in right on me. How'd you do that? <laughs> With Father Ford. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Father Ford, he used to be charged with everything those days. He was the church was in the community. Father Ford was the the man. The man. Anyway, so we want to happen on Sundays, and we thought, let's get permission from the church, from the Catholic, from God see Father Ford. He said, Father Ford, we'd like it to happen on Sundays, but we want your permission. He says, no, hold on, man. He says, you're Greek Orthodox, you're not Catholics. So what do you worry about? I said, no, Father Ford. We might be Greek Orthodox, but we have respect for the church. We have to get your permission. Do you want us to happen after the church or before? He said, he said, you know, you're good boys. I say a good way to church for your Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best public relations. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best, I think. <laughs> and he did. And so, yes, we all came in, we came in and you know. So very successful shop. Yeah. You know, can you uh, tell us, um, uh, Costa, what were people looking for back in the 50s? What kind of seafood in Rydalmere? What were people looking for? What did they ask for? Uh, prawns a lot. 
Yep. Yeah, bronze. I used to market uh, a nice behavior bronze to the window. People go to the hotel and say, bronze, bronze. bronze. Yeah, bronze and beer. Yeah, and other piece of fish. But bronze and lobster was the most important there. Really? Those days, yeah. Back then? Yeah, they were cheap enough to. Wow. Cheap. Now, you were there, I think, with uh, with uh, Dionysi, with Dennis, no. for about six years at that Ronald Mina shop or a bit more? About five, I think. Five, five. five, yeah. And then um, you you want to expand. Correct. But you want to, you want to take it further. You want to. You want to get experience in importing, exporting. Correct. And, and distribution and everything. Correct. So then you work as a salesperson yeah. for a, another company. Yes. Boston's a company, IFD, yeah. Australian Food Distributors. So, and you're there for a while. You're Six years. Six yeah. years. Yeah. So you get to know yeah. how the system works. <laughs> but, but also, they, uh, I wasn't only doing sales. When I started the company, they had one van on the road. Then what I used to do, I used to go and find an area, find the customers, get the truck on the road, and truck the driver, and teach the driver. So when I left the company, I left with 12 trucks. So from one truck to 12 trucks? To 12 trucks. I had to organize the area, the, uh, the driver, and put the truck on, and, and, and control all those areas. I was looking after those areas. In the meantime, in the meantime, in 1963, you meet Irene Yaros. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, so a good Catherian girl. Yeah. Right. And I think you meet her. You meet her at a Catherian um, dance. Correct. At a yeah. monthly Bantic dance Bantic Bantic at Paddington Town Hall. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and you marry in 1963. Yeah. Um, so your life changes. How did, how does your life change after marriage? After well, weddings. <laughs> no, I, I think. Uh, it has to change a lot because the uh, Irene was working also in the shops. Oh, was she? Yeah, she had the experience. So he fit in the shop, and then as the brother too, he liked the two. So we get together very, you know, very well, and uh, we'll carry on. And then when we sold the shop, when we sold the shop, we went to uh, Rockdale. We bought a house there, a house. And that's where we stay there. And with Dennis, so Dennis got married later, so he moved out and so forth, yeah. Um, in 1960, it's 1968 where you move to the markets. Yeah. And you set up yeah. Poulos Brothers. Correct. Okay. It was a very, very different sea, uh, market, fish markets yeah. back then. Correct. Who was involved? Who had the stalls? Who had the stores back then? I was uh, Rochester. And uh, the other one was... Uh, the the Italian guy, some Italians. He was uh, who else was it those days? Uh, it was just there was a two men of the stalls. So there were two or three. Mm. I think it was all yeah. together. It's a long bloody time ago to remember. Yes. <laughs> that, now, when it's it's one thing to have a fish shop, and it's another thing to have an export import distributing yeah. company. Yeah. So Pulos is, a, is you know Pulos Brothers is a a very, very different company yeah, there. Yes, but don't forget, when we started, of course, the most important issue was to start with the shops and some restaurants. <clears throat> and eventually, you get to know, you grow the business, you advertise, and so on, and you know, and move on. So were your first customers as a distributor Greeks? They are. Were they? They were. They were. They were. And, <clears throat> and I might say this, after all these years, maybe second or third generation, I always respect them and it's been successful for our business to start off with. But two years ago, when the uh, COVID started and that, the restaurant shut, but the shops kept open. So we did shut, we lost some business, but we still carry on because our shops are theirs. We had those business. How important do you think? How important do you think Greeks, Italians, etc., were in bringing new seafood to Australian to the Australian diet? Yeah, I don't think so many Italians, uh, mm -hmm. not so many Italians, mostly Greeks, a few Yugoslavs, Asians, and all that. Yeah, like we introduced, for example, you know, the octopus, you know, what I mean, yeah. or the calamari, or yeah. the yeah. 
Well, you know, because Australians love their fillet, you know. I think how it come, I think eventually you had the horses and the critics get together <laughs> and the restaurants, what have you, and that's how they learn. Yeah. yeah. Now, you went back to uh, Kitara after 24 years. Yes. With uh, Irene yeah, and the family. Um, no, no, family, just Irene oh, just and I. Okay, yeah. yep. And tell us, uh, how did you see Kithira after 24 years? Had Costa changed? Had Kithira changed? What were your experiences? They're, both, they're all changed. <laughs> both changed. They both changed. They both changed, correct. Because yeah. you had gotten used to Australia, the Australian way. Well, of course, yeah. And, and, and I remember, I remember the, uh, the hard times. I remember, you know, running barefoot on the stones <laughs> as a kid and all that. And, and I realized how, uh, yeah, I'll tell you, how happy I was in the way too. When, when we're going away, we live in the island, we live in the, the village, all the neighbors, it came out to say bye-bye and that, and some cry. I said, look, be happy, don't cry. If you wanted to cry, you should have cried when I left here, 60 years old, go to the now. Now, I'm going to my home, I'm going to the happiness, I'm going where I belong. So be happy, because I'm happy. Wow. Yeah. Um, Costa, how did uh, you and Irene uh, give the Greek heritage, that Greek culture to your kids, you know, because you've got yeah. three children, I think, three? Yeah, yeah, yeah three boys. You've yeah. got three boys, you've got Panayoti, Peter, you've got Dionysi, Dennis, and, yeah. and Theodore, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so how did you how, how did you and Irene give them the, the Greek culture? Did you take them to Greek dances, to... Exactly, yeah, all oh, right, yes, they did. And uh, Irene, the English was pretty good too, and you have a lot of people with the hospitals. Anybody wants to go to, get our ring, go to trust like go to help. And now uh, the boys got teaching, uh, they went to schools and all that. The grandma will speak to them in Greek. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I respond to them too. Now we want them to, we want to learn the language, for sure. Mm. One of them, yeah. Um, and the Greek, I mean, let's put it this way. Their home, it was Greek. Mm. But definitely, yeah, it was a Greek home. Now, Pulos Brothers just keeps on growing. Correct. Growing, you know, like, you know, you, you buy your own premises, you know, you've got depots, yeah. interstate. Yeah. Um, now, your boys, all three boys uh, studied. Correct. And had their own respective careers. Correct. You know, uh, I think Peter did uh, law and... Economics. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, Dennis Dionysi was a mechanic, mechanic yeah. and uh, Theodore was an accountant, I think. Yeah, correct. They all had their own careers. Correct. But, you know, uh, was it inevitable for them to come to the family business? I think, uh, Vasily, you have to, to appreciate the fact that, I mean, let me put it this way, to, to, have, to be a professional, to have anything you do is an asset in life, okay? But people say, oh, she studied law, he's a lawyer, he makes a lot of money. Yeah, he does get good money when he's busy. But, but in this business, you work every day, money's coming every week, and then, and then you're the, your own boss. But you must be very proud having your three sons involved. Very, very proud, uh, Vasily. And also, I'm very proud to have another four nephews. That's right. So because you... they, the seven all together. Yes. And they're two dead equal. Yeah. And they're, what I'm happy is that I see them not only at work, but all in private. They go together themselves, they're friends, friendly and all that. So they're not working just for the money. That work it because of the love that I do. But Pulos Brothers now officially is 55 years old Correct. as a company. Correct. Right, 55. And yet it is three generations of family. Correct. It's a family business. Correct. And you know, you were telling me how there are some workers here 
that have been here for generations. Correct. You know what I mean? The, the families. Correct. And your customers are, are, are generations. Generations. Correct. generations. So Correct. there's a, a, a great sense of loyalty here. Correct. To, Correct. You know? Correct. Uh, we, don't, we don't advertise a lot. And uh, I'm not here to boast that. But the fact is, Pullers Brothers today is the biggest seafood company in this country. There's other companies bigger, but they sell meat, they sell groceries, fruit of that. We straight fish. So it's a straight fish company, we are the biggest in the country. That's a fact. Now, you grow bigger? Yes, it does. I mean, through the supermarkets, through new, as you saw there in the factory, we've got the new machinery, we've got uh, robots doing packaging, immobilizers coming in. So, obvious, this is not like the fish business was 50 years ago, or 20. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. So, everything is going to be modernized, it's going to be upgraded, because everybody was safety, there was health, and the supermarkets, everybody, they want what they want. So we have to go with it. But the business is the business will grow and well I know I'm not gonna be here forever, it's up to the boys what they got to do. Now tell me you've been in the country, you've been in the country for for seventy one years. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and you know, who is Costa? Is he Greek? Is he Australian? Is okay. he a bit of both? A bit of both, I mean. Yeah. Uh, I think it's He's probably more Greek, believe it or not. It's more Greek, but, you know, I, I'm fortunate enough that I speak the Greek language every day there in the markets. So, yeah. So, yeah. Well, what does Australia mean to you? Well, it means everything. Because, like I said, Australia is good to me, it'd be good to my kids and, uh, and everyone. I mean, like, people used to laugh with us because you could speak the English properly. We have problems today. My granddaughter today, Peter's girl, she's 32 years. She's a professor at the Sydney University. It's teaching what? English. Wow. <laughs> English culture. It's amazing, that's right. Yeah, yeah. how things turn. How things turn. <laughs> now, I